Um, so I'm Gabby Minter. I am a veterinarian. I graduated from the University of Minnesota in 2020, so peak COVID. I'm very grateful to be talking to you guys today. You're already ahead of the game looking to see what's all out there. When I was an undergrad, I actually was in a course that had some, something similar to this where different people from different parts of vet med all came together and talked to us about their jobs. Um, so very happy to be here today. Um, so unlike a lot of veterinarians who grow up thinking that they wanted to be a vet from like age three or four or five, I did not know that was going to be my plan. I liked science, I was good at math. I wanted to be an architect and then I wanted to be a human cardiac surgeon and then I wanted to be an astronaut. Uh, and I actually went to college at the University of Wisconsin-Madison thinking that I was going to be a pharmaceutical engineer. And I took a lot of my chemistry courses and realized I did not really like chemistry. I must have just had a great teacher in high school that made me love chemistry. And so I really did not know what I wanted to do halfway through college. Um, and so what I ended up doing is switching to a biology major. Still not sure what I was going to do. And that's when I took that one credit course through my college that was about vet med and all the different things that you can do in it. Um, and it really showed the diversity of careers that are available in veterinary medicine. And then I decided to be a vet, um, which was hard to do kind of halfway through college without having the right prereqs, but I did it. I really had to shape up my grades because they were not great, especially after taking organic chemistry, if any of you have experienced that struggle yet. Um, and really start working and networking in the veterinary field. Um, so that's me and with my first Doberman that my family had named Angel. Um, we are a Doberman family. So I always grew up around animals, but did not really think about being a veterinary veterinarian in the first place. So I did my undergraduate at University of Wisconsin-Madison and then got accepted to my in-state school, University of Minnesota, right after graduation. So going into veterinary school, although I took that one course, I really did not understand everything that you possibly could do as a veterinarian kind of living in the city. My understanding was most vets are vets for cats and dogs and do primary care. Um, and so that's what I initially went and wanted to do. Really my first, second and third year, I was going to be a small animal veterinarian. And I really liked business and management as well. And so I decided I was going to be a small animal practice owner eventually. Um, so I was part of a club called Veterinary Business Management Association that taught us a lot about networking, business management, owning, that sort of thing, until I found my true love and passion, which is cardiology. So when I took one of my small animal medicine courses, we had a unit that was on cardiology. And... I fell in love. I loved the physiology around it. I loved the problem solving. And then I loved the people that were in it. Um, and so I ended up deciding at that time that I was going to go and get board certified in cardiology. So that kind of changed up my after graduation plans. In order to become board certified in cardiology, 
you need to do what's called a rotating internship. And so what that means is you sign up for the match, you get letters of recommendation, you write some personal statements, and you rank different programs that you are interested in. Like I had mentioned before, I graduated in May of 2020, so peak COVID. And so I did get into a rotating internship at Tufts University. Most of my rotating internship, so it's called a rotating internship because you're supposed to rotate through all of the different specialties. So emergency medicine, internal medicine, surgery, cardiology, neurology, nutrition, the things that you're interested in. It ended up being extremely heavily emergency medicine due to the pandemic, which was good and very interesting for me. I applied for a cardiology residency that year, um, very competitive and did not get accepted. And so I then decided to do a small animal specialty internship. So that's another one year program that then you only do that area of interest. So I only did cardiology at Angel Animal Medical Center. It's a great year, I learned so much. Um, and so I reapplied for a residency and did not match again. So at that point, I had to do a lot of self-reflecting um, and talking with my mentors and thinking about, do I keep trying on this career path? I really did and do love cardiology. Um, maybe it's not right the, the right path for me. What other options are there? I'm Luckily to have been born and raised in Minnesota, which is a giant hub for medical devices. And in the cardiology, we do a lot of pacemaker placements. So for animals that have a slow heart rate where their heart is not functioning appropriately, we put, you can put a pacemaker in them that paces the heart for the animal. And one of the companies that makes these pacemakers is Boston Scientific. And I assumed, I guess, that there were veterinarians that worked for medical device companies. I really did not know that much about it. Uh, so I Googled, I Googled Boston Scientific Veterinarian and was very lucky to have found an open position back in my home state, in my home city, and they were looking for somebody who had a cardio background, and I did, and it seemed like a good opportunity for me where I could still be very involved in cardiology, but I was not a cardiologist. Um, just a summary of Boston Scientific. I know some people might not know about it. I didn't know much, honestly, before doing my own research is it's a medical device company that primarily is focused on interventional medical, medical interventions. Um, and it's most famous for a couple of things. Um, they do have a drug eluding stent that can be used to open clogged arteries. They also have minimally invasive an implantable cardioverter defibrillator. So they do a lot of cardiac rhythm management, like pacemakers, defibrillators. And so that seemed like a great opportunity for me to kind of stay in that realm, but do something a little bit different. And of what I do, a lot of what I do is planning. So every medical device that goes into a person or that is used on a person in a clinical trial, which is testing on a person, needs to go through preclinical testing, which is testing on animals. And they do this to ensure that the device that's being used or placed is safe and it's doing its job appropriately. They want to make sure that those things are covered prior to them going in any person. 
This is required by the FDA, so the Food and Drug Administration. And because of that requirement and that need, that's where my job mostly comes in. Um, I work as a veterinary advisor for the projects that I am chosen for, but I really get a big say in which projects I choose to be assigned to. And my responsibilities are, it's really 75% planning for your preclinical trials. So it's working with the engineers who have designed the device on study design, helping them determine what sort of bench work work can be done and prior to going to animal testing, helping them talk through which animal model could be used based off of what's most similar in a human. Like what are they really trying to test and what animal has the body part or parts most similar to a human. And I'm also involved in writing the protocol that our IACUC, so the people who give us the overall approval to use animals, um, use to approve the study. This involves determining our overall surgical accesses that we might need, what we're measuring, what we're looking for, and what points we would determine whether the animal's no longer doing well anymore, and when we would end the study. And the main goal of this is to practice the most humane research that we can, which is why we put in so much time and effort into planning. And about 50 years ago, the principles of the three R's were developed to help us do that and help us think through each protocol. The first R is replacement. So are there any other models or tools like bench work that we can do? that's able to address the scientific questions that we have without using an animal. Um, the second R is reduction. So how do we appropriately design and analyze our animal experience so it's robust enough to minimize the number of animals that we overall need to use and refinement? We need to stay up to date on our latest technologies and understanding to minimize the pain, suffering, or distress of any of the research animals. So that's probably 75% of what I do, just thinking things through, working with the engineers, the overall study sponsors to come up with the best plans we can use the animals that we have the most appropriately. The other 25% of the time, I am a surgeon. And so I get to implant the devices that we are studying. And I'm also responsible for making sure that the animal, while it's under anesthesia, is doing well. So my day to day can oops, vary quite a bit. And that overall depends a bit on whether it's a surgery day or if it's a desk day. So on a surgery day, those days can be pretty long. Um, it can start as early as 7 a.m. and end as late as 7 p.m., depending on the time and whether we're doing a necropsy at the end of the day. And when I arrive at work on a surgery day, I change into scrubs and I arrive prior to the animal getting sedated or anesthetized, just in case there are any questions or concerns about the study or the animal prior to that happening. I do have very excellent technicians that I work with who are very smart and talented at what they do. And they can usually get the animal from being awake to on the surgical table within about a half hour. I then check in with my surgery techs who are my technicians who are responsible for maintaining anesthesia and see if they have any questions about the intraoperative medications, how the animal should be positioned or whatnot. Um, if anybody is new who's coming in, so any of the engineers, people coming to watch, I have a 10 minute presentation that I give them about why we do what we do and the importance of animal research. So they know the rules that we have for their safety, for our safety, 
and to also let them know if they have any questions at all, they can talk to me or any of the technicians or any of my colleagues. Um, so I have many roles that day, um, but the, one, the main ones are one, surgery, being the surgeon, and two is working with my technicians to make sure that the animal is, is healthy and that the animal is stable. And my, I usually have about two surgery days per week. So those are my long days, um, but the other days can vary quite a bit. Those are what I consider my desk days. So my days where I'm planning for surgery. It's my responsibility to make sure I work only about 40 hours a week, which means that on my desk days, I can have shorter days. So I usually work nine to three on those days. And on those days, I have meetings with engineers or sponsor teams, as well as my the other veterinarians I work with are very collaborative. And so we have a lot of talks with each other about the best way to use animals or how to get the most information that we can. So there's six veterinarians that work at Boston Scientific in my role, and we have about 20 technicians. Every single one of the veterinarians career paths were different to getting here. We have two veterinarians that are boarded. One is double boarded in large animal surgery and lab animal medicine. One is boarded in anesthesia. A couple of them have masters in public health. Um, and some are like me. I don't have any extra letters behind my name other than my DVM, but I'm super interested in what we're doing. And I have a, a cardiology background, which is, is what they were looking for. Kind of my overall advice to students is kind of look for opportunities and be open to opportunities. I did not think I was going to be in research working for medical device companies when I started vet school, when I ended vet school. I've been at Boston Scientific now for almost a year um, and I'm so happy with, with what I do. And there are hard parts of my job because at, a lot, at the end of almost every study, we do need to euthanize the animal. And that's usually to collect the tissue that the device is in or the device was touching to make sure that no damage is being caused to that tissue, to make sure it won't cause any damage to a human when it's in a human. And that can, can take a toll on people. Um, and um, But it's really important to think about all the good work you're doing and these animals are treated amazingly. Um, they get really great care, any concerns at all. One of our technicians lets us know, a doctor takes a look at them. So be open to different opportunities. Um, I would also say it's really important, especially at this time, if you're in undergrad thinking about veterinary school or veterinary technician school, think about what makes you different and what makes you special. Um, it took me a while to kind of figure that out. Everybody has different strengths and weaknesses and interests, um, but continue to work on figuring that out and use it to network yourself. That's what got me into the door at Boston Scientific, showing them how interested in cardiology I was. Um, keep your LinkedIn updated. I know it's kind of early, but I would say that's how a lot of people in the medical device industry, industry because it is a big corporation, kind of reach out to one another or recruiters can find you. And overall, the best thing about being a veterinarian is you, even in my role, I get to do so many things. And that's just in my role. I get to manage our animals that we have. If they have diarrhea, um, if they have any acute health concerns, I get to be a surgeon. I get to work with engineers. Um, and I get to learn a lot about 
human medicine because a lot of the people who come in are actually human physicians learning how to implant different devices. So learning about human medicine as well has been a fun and interesting journey. Um, so overall, just know what makes you special, be open to different opportunities. And I did not think I would end up here, but I'm so happy that I did. On the first page of my presentation is my email. If anybody wants to reach out to me, you certainly can. I am based in Minnesota, um, but feel free to reach out if you have any questions or whatnot.